right, Clint. Uh, Cliff? Cliff? Cliff! Cliff, welcome to the St. Augustine's Asylum for the Mentally Ill. My producer Tom said good things about you. In your backpack is a flashlight, a voice recorder, an EMF, and a couple of little fun occult things. We'll let you know when to take those out. Ready to pay off some of those college debts and beer tabs? Well, of course you are. And when you're ready, enter in through those front doors. Nice, the door was unlocked. Ah, it can get a little sticky sometimes. So, here's the story behind the St. Augustine's Asylum for the Mentally Ill. It was founded in the 1880s, closed in the 1960s, and a lot of nasty stuff happened here. I mean, this place is only supposed to house around 500 patients, but at its peak, it was around 3,300 patients in here. I mean, the place was, you know, less of a hospital and more of a place where you dropped your problems off and hoped they disappeared. In the end, this place was sort of against what the Bible is supposed to teach. I mean, there was no love here, no grace, no healing. The patients were not here to be rehabilitated. Ordinary people just wanted them gone from public. They shoved those with non-threatening mental conditions or those deemed inappropriate to society together with legitimate psychopaths and murderers and other violent monsters and basically said, let God sort it out. The atrocities in here are just too much to count. The death toll was unreal. The violence. This is where the hundred hallway patients would convene. Once you heard that, the patients pre never left. When he actually received decent care. Then the war hit, the depression hit, and then the budgets all fell apart. The room you stand in once healed 20 patients in need of attention. And by the end, 150 patients have passed through this room, naked, starving, attacking each other at random, slaying themselves with metal wires from their beds. Be careful where you step. Alright, this is a good place to start. I want you to take out your voice recorder and I'll hopefully be able to awaken this place. Okay, spirits of St. Augustine, please reveal your presence to us. Show us that you are in this room. Feel free to interact with anything or speak to us. Use your words, use your voice, and let us know that you're here. Okay, play that back. Let us know that you're here. Alright, let's try it again. Alright, alright, let's try this. Ghosts of St. Augustine, please let us know that you are still in this hospital. I give you permission to reveal yourself. I give you permission to come to life. Just give us a sign that you are here. Tell us where you are. Speak to us now into this microphone. Alright, check that. Now into this microphone. Alright, let's try one more spot. <sighs> Ghosts of St. Augustine, you're all a bunch of ghoulish pricks. Show up or piss off! Entrance to patient cells 
to go to 219. Eh, we're talking extreme bipolarism, schizophrenia, dementia. Not necessarily dangerous, but it could be a challenge for society. Dang, the door's locked. This sucks. Out of this hallway and then take a take your second right. <laughs> Doors locked. Damn it! Damn it! Oh, okay, there's a there's a staircase. Take this staircase up to the second floor, and you should be next to a fire escape. You should be able to get out that way. So so go up the staircase.
Well, I, I, it's about the eyes. I kind of had this from you. There's an urban legend, and, and I, I repeat, it's an urban legend about the peeper Clive Johnson. You see, the there was a patient who suffered from dementia and swore that Clive was more than just a mere man, and uh, he would kind of haunt this patient all throughout the day. You know, rampant hallucinations that progressively got worse, but at night he never saw the peeper. Then he discovered that if he closed his eyes, he could escape Clive. But whenever he opened them, Clive would be there, waiting for him and getting closer and closer. Eventually, the patient used a fork and he blinded himself. And while he was soaked in his blood from his sockets, he screamed to the entire hospital that he was free, he was safe. And a week later, two more patients charged Clive with stalking them, even though he was confined to solitary. I mean, it's crazy. They, they took their eyesights, too. This pattern didn't stop. I thought it was BS, but based on what we've seen tonight, I don't pretty much believe anything. So, try to get the hell out of there, and if it gets too intense, try to shut your eyes. Damn flashlight broke. I can't use that anymore. I see you now. 